Dear viewer, did you money? Did your wife's boyfriend neglect to pay you your good boy allowance because you blew your paycheck on FDs and leaps in the hopes that Jerome Poo could scoot a couple won your way? Did the Fed drip of them trillions and the subsequent green deal does look too good to be true? So you shorting the literal savior of our planet made sense in your puny little brain? Did you at least have a little fun now that you're crawling back into your Corvette bed, emaciated, shaken from the vertigo of watching your portfolio go from a few rent payments to a couple big gulps in a matter of minutes because you tried to emulate those dinky brain chat riding meme stock waves at high tide, eh, you're good fam. You and hundreds of thousands did the same damn thing. The immoral behavior on behalf of the users. Welcome back to Wall Street Bets. So pull up that sweet five word DD, throw away that worthless subscription to Bloomberg Terminal, drop a few thousand on an ITM poot or two, and let Wall Street bettors show you that becoming a millionaire is just a few retarded trades away. Is the million supposed to go backwards? The future of our great country, this megalith of industry and import, the largest and richest superpower in the world, democratically rests in the hands of its voters and the president-elect. Who will win this time on America's Next Top Warlord? Will it be the old guy or will it be the old guy? Who gives a fuck about that shit? What, did the decrepit dingus with more plaque than brain win the popularity contest? Big surprise, that dude's not my president. Nah, it's Tendi's motherfucker. Doctor's orders, Tendi's, use as directed. Whoever batters those poultry pieces that buy you your first yacht, your first mansion, your second manwich, whatever nets you those coveted private plane rides to Uzbekistani brothels and peppers your sinuses with booger sugar, crypto coke, and whatever the fuck this dude smokes. Whoever batters the Tendi's is the real president of America, and that's this guy. The subreddit harboring chromosomal juggernauts that move markets more than the Wall Street Journal and shill more stock than Kramer and his handlers is making the rounds again. And as it should, because this economy is Milwaukee. And only a Reddit army of autistic neats and retarded bleeps are up to the task of making sense of it, kind of. While Nana and your boomer in-laws saw their retirement accounts bounce back like spring chickens fleeing from that spooky scary bat virus those nice commies over there made us for Easter, Wall Street bettors lost in one depraved levels of tendies, praying that Jay Powell's wrist whip was on drip drip and that money printer's ink goes brr, brr. What had happened to the legend of his whose hands were diamonds and gains were photoshopped? Nothing. There was nothing. The real question is, what happened to his legacy? Accounts were blown up, IRAs decimated, Robinhood cash cards declined at honeymoon dinners, diamond hands are and were a plight to many whose greed had reigned and whose buttholes strained. Millions lost to meme stocks tanking after the high of the hype crashed, and the degen betters called the plug and complained that this sack was bunk. I mean, that's, wait, that's not right. Let me see here. Hundreds of Sam I Am's lost thousands. Thousands of Lenny's lost millions. And then the flanks of this slaughter, bloodied monies were collected consistently, almost ethereally, into a massive fund owned by a shadowy cult known as the Theta Gang. Their true nature and successes are unknown to Wall Street bettors because no one knows how to translate their ancient language. It will forever be a mystery. Diamond hands torched portfolios with the radiance of a thousand suns. Feast your eyes upon the ash piles of those skull-fucked and burned by greed, poor timing, and stupidity. Memers and freshman traders lost it all, rather miraculously. Everyone's supposed to be a genius in the bull market, right? Well then explain this shit. We all know now that the economy is performing tremendously. The Great Depression 2.0 electric grape-flavored boogaloo was just a psyop. It was never gonna happen. Fuck a depression. We all take Adderall and Zoloft here. One Addy during pre-market when the hopes are bubbling like a deep fryer for tenderinos, one Zoloft at market close when bankruptcy is a sure thing and I've ran out of shoe to boil. Yeah, they canceled this shitty movie faster than you could say the wrong sequence of words 10 years ago on a Twitter account you forgot the password to and now the local spreadsheet factory fired you in the middle of a birdemic. Try the new trading app everyone's buzzing about. Affiliate link in the description below. What does this have to do with anything? Well, the milieu of reckless trading invites opportunities to those cash strapped and desperate, which is basically everyone. 
the adored subreddit has been invaded by new booties. In search for an easy payday, especially after seeing the professional speds and spurks pulling in 100k gains in a fortnight on the bet that a fucking mattress company would explode in share value equal to that of a Fortune 500 whale. These posers think they're going to be the next Elon Belfort. They don't realize they have to put the work in. Want to be dinky heads with their day-old Robinhood accounts, their three free stocks from Weeble, and their stimulus checks burning a really small hole in their pockets. New booties swarmed into the forum like infant gamblers ready to suckle on spies fat mommy milkers. But new booties are claiming territory at a shocking rate, though it's mainly in the mod inboxes of the metrosexual moderators who work 20 hours a day pretending to vet innumerable posts they receive for review, being paid a wage of 0.004 Dogecoin an hour. Suffice to say, the newcomers have polluted the gene pool of curated retards with their normal IQs and unvaccinated peens. Of the two million donguses, we can safely bet that at least 18 of them are imposters. There was even a famous Ellen DeGeneres impersonator asking which stocks Zer should buy. Notable OGs have argued this recent influx of users has marked the end of a certain golden age of the subreddit, and the mods are leaping off buildings at an alarming rate. Put someone, just put the nets on the, the mad at the massive gains from wet-eared teenagers that don't know shit about fundamentals and think equity is a kind of dish soap. New booties are betting their stimmy checks on call options that net them enough money to literally buy a whole ass Tesla and Rolex to boot. To those new booties who played along and made banging ass profits without the slightest clue of what the fucking ETF is, we extend our welcomes to you all with a humble congratulations and fuck you. And to those new dookies who didn't like the way your life savings was looking at you, beat it to a pulp with a shit stock pick and then post the aftermath so others can laugh and give you up dudes for your troubles. Well, stick around. You'll, 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 you'll get it next time, pal. Dear viewer, I get it. You want to hear about the games and the stops and the what have yous. After all, it's the talk of the town, ain't it? Buckle up, moron. We got an economy to crash. Once upon a time, in an economic landscape where billions of IOUs are printed, where fundamentals are diddled like they took a one-way train ride to Neverland Ranch, where the economy overtly parts ways with the funny numbers and lines at the New York Stock Exchange, where its citizens trade Dogecoin for a better place in line at the truck stop bread line. There once was a select number of tickers that rose from the ashes of a decaying old world, like a phoenix of hope needed in the dark times economic turmoil produces. The antagonist? Short sellers. Short sellers have proven to love eating sh on terrible short positions against the likes of Tesla, so it's natural to distrust their effectiveness and bet against them. Melvin Capital, Citron Research, and others are no different in this regard. The company they selected? Everyone's favorite video game pawn shop, GameStop. And no wonder, it was obviously a failing company with a looming debt cloud and a pension for shitty sales tactics and customer swindling, but its digital sales were up 309%. The company held on to a pretty pile of cash and chewy co-founder Ryan Cohen revealed a 10% stake in the company. GameStop seemed to have a new lease on life after containing their cash by closing most of its stores and laying off its employees. What an excellent time to buy in, right? Well, wrong. Listen to the fucking experts, you peasant. Listen to people like this guy, the first heretic, the squire of ye old Citron Research, a firm known for their short positions, driving failing businesses to the earth with a nine iron. Along with firms like Melvin Capital and others, Citron's public response and price target for the company was a supreme shitpost. Instead of winning out and receiving the markets, congratulations, fuck you, Wall Street betters said fuck you to the moon. When the egregiously high short interest was made known to our beloved subreddit, hundreds of retarded day traders alongside thousands of new booties bought up shares and calls out the yin-yang and drove the share value up and up, flooring the expectations of normies and hedgies alike. Melvin and his friends lost billions. The plebs won millions. And outsiders who witnessed this black swan take flight, shat bricks, and FOMO'd the fuck in, all in a few trading days. Brilliant. While the Redditors and 4chaners behind this magnificent display of financial populism celebrated with parades and tendy buffets, the toll trolls banged their mangy chest and demanded recompense. The lands of media and its crisis actors praised the noble hedgies and shorties for their tireless efforts to provide liquidity to the markets and demonized the bands of retards who just wanted to make a few bucks at the expense of Wall Street and a few bad hedge funds out for blood. Fuck them, right? Media totally dropped the ball on the whole accurate reporting thing and smeared the personalities inhabiting the Reddit trading forums. And then there's this guy, the world's own opportunistic troglodyte in his natural habitat. Wait a minute. There's the Reddit uh, Robin Hoodie market, and 
you can't lose in that market. What is he doing? He's starting to believe. when I was short at my hedge fund and I was positioned short, meaning I needed it down, I would create a, a level of activity beforehand that could drive the futures. Uh, or if I were long and I would want to make things a little bit rosy, I would go in and take a bunch of stocks and make sure that they are, they're higher. Yeah. But it's a fun game and it's a lucrative game and you feel so. Let's say you take a longer term view intraday and you say, listen, I'm going to boost the futures and then when the real market comes in, they're going to knock it down. That's going to create a negative view. That's a strategy very worth doing. I would encourage anyone who's in the hedge fund game to do it because it's legal. Right. It is a very quick way to make money and very satisfying. Oh, by the way, no one else in the world would ever admit that, but I think here. That's right. And you can say that here. I can't. I'm not going to say it on TV. Um, now, running stocks is something that, of course, is illegal. It's like you're dealt, you're dealt, you're dealt 21. I know what you're thinking. This gentleman might have too many wrinkles in his brain to be considered a worthy ally to Wall Street bets. But he's slaying stocks like your neighborhood Vicodin clinic and the boomer fiends that watch his show be jonesing for his stock tips. Smart guy, he seems. Though he may look like Homer Simpson, did a passive income, and got himself some new threads, he was a vocal champion to the subreddit prior to GME's explosion. And we'll give him that. See, we've had too much fun. This show has to come to an end. Robin Hood was in trouble. They had a liquidity problem. Too many new booties bought too many shares and forced their hand by revealing a deep flaw in their structure. The CEO is a midwit who doesn't understand his company. And fintech isn't capitalized enough to handle the amount of volume and girth of a worldwide two-pump chump scheme. Robinhood tapped billions of dollars of funding to allow users on their platform to continue trading. And it wasn't enough. The clearing firm shouted its safe word, and the Dom SEC raised deposit requirements. In a word. So they restricted trading on any and all meme stocks for decent reasons indecently communicated and assured you that they're just protecting the customers by grinding the hype train to a halt. As a consequence, the share price of GameStop took the elevator down. To spare you the details, Robinhood, Webull, eToro, and other retail trading apps don't have you in mind when they pretend to serve the SEC overlord by restricting access and selective securities to the masses while allowing large bulk orders from the same securities by the moneyed. Who matters more in the market? Few actors at the helm of private equity and hedge farms providing liquidity to the markets, propping up this house of cards we call the economy. Or a few million retards that just like the stock and also provide liquidity to the markets. It's a circle jerk, and you're the hired help. With the subreddit of its size, a noticeable amount of hive mind bandwagoning bubbles to the surface. Certain tickers become memes, and with the memes come the dreams. There are those that try to campaign a new wave to ride on by starting the domino with a simple post. Plenty of posters drafted Adderall-inspired theses on GME, but none of them sparked. In 2019, a humble fund manager, Michael Burry, yes, the Michael Burry, and his company bought 3 million shares of GameStop. But GameStop tanked after a depressing earnings report, so he sold around 8% of the stake. Why only 8% and not the whole caboose? I don't know, man, go ask him. Arguably, Burry's stake in the company, a whole 20% of his portfolio by the beginning of 2020, was the golden ticket in the trash can, awaiting some sprightly dumpster divers to discover. That brings us to deep fucking value. The man, the myth, the retard. This kind fellow bet on long leap calls ordered nearly a year and a half ago. He since made nearly $20 million in profit or more from his initial investment of $53,000. The man believed in the trade wholeheartedly. He suffered through the lemmings that shat on his positions from the get go, but he triumphed and marched on with diamond hands through tremendous potential profits in search of even greater gains asking, what's an exit strategy? He became the patron saint of the subreddit without even declaring himself as one. Now how's life shaped up for old screaming feline? He's now being investigated by regulators, recovering from the passive aggressive hit jobs done by media, and is probably wishing he had never made his trades public after GME became the highest traded security in the United States. The dude has a family, a day job, and a life. And instead of leaving him alone with his millions, the House Financial Committee invited him to stay a while and speak on his complicity on the alleged market manipulation that occurs regularly on the subreddit. Instead, he'll likely shrug and say, I just like the stock. Deep fucking value made history in short order, unknowingly leading a phantom charge of an economic revolt 
peopled by retail traders. Suddenly, the new booties could be proud they were behind a movement, both financial and social, and that they could profit off the very institutions they believe had a part to play in the recessions and depressions of the past, with this goober as their temporary mascot. Godspeed, deep fucking value. On the onset, it was a sight to behold indeed. Retards everywhere combine their cerebrums together to launch a revenge story so sweet it makes the economic orphans of 2008 weep an event that united a divided country for a day. You can say it was about sending a message. In reality, it began with a few retards on and off Reddit, who strategized OTM and ITM positions with thoughts of short squoes thunked, all without the literacy required to, to formulate a message to send. The rest followed suit and became the story. The distinction doesn't matter. It wasn't about the company or the money. It evolved beyond into the hearts and minds of Americans and then the world. Millions boarded the hype train in search of the squeeze prophesized and the tears of Wall Street unsympathized. Millions of disaffected, bored, or desperate folk who just wanted a fucking piece of the pie. You know, this one. But the pie's peace disparity was not entirely the fault of the poor little hedge funds. Though many of the new booties thought this was the case. Even if GameStop completely restructured their business model and operations to weather the perilous decades to come, it wouldn't really matter. Even if weeks down the road, all the million and one diamond-handed savages that held until it hit a penny stock price point suddenly awoke one Monday morning to a 69x squeeze that made the multi-millionaires, it wouldn't really matter. Even if every citizen owned a share in GameStop with an entry point of $100 and the stock shot up to a million dollars, it wouldn't really matter. The profits won out by hedge funds surpassed the profits of retards, and those that rode the hype train have suffered the costs of diamond hands. And who knows? The squoes may squeeze, either next week, next month, next year, or in a galaxy far, far away. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, these diamond hands don't break, and we all got tendies to bake. Now that the year has ended and the hindsight 2020 was just beer goggles and nightmare rectangles filled with uh-oh moments, one thing is for certain. Those old pasty do-nothings that occupy Wall Street boardrooms don't know a damn thing about making money. Making money from next to nothing, that is. Neither does this troglodyte or this person or this fucking idiot or these people or these people. None of them. See, now your teenage daughter can turn her untaxed OnlyFans payout into, into risk-drunk, tax-disadvantaged option contracts with a few taps of her thumb and accidentally double her money with a Becky portfolio and stock tips she found on TikTok. See, now your dropout nephew can spend three nights in a row doing poppers, reading charts, and checking market sentiments on Wall Street bets, realize his next big play is shorting peak oil stocks for some incoherent reason, and flip his five-figure PDT chode into a six-figure whopper when he could have just worked for 30 years <laughs> for some incoherent reason. Lives are being changed here on this subreddit. Kids are turning 18 and yeeting their four-figure ESA accounts into six-figure Tesla funds. If you look through the forest of red rockets and negative balances, you will find posts by people whose financial circumstances changed drastically for the better and, and for the worse, but we don't pay attention to those people. Find me a person that wants to play the silly wage cage game, and I'll find you a person that already did, because that person is a boomer. These account balances aren't owned by the dummy who smiles and grays as he climbs the corporate ladder. The same dipstick that doesn't realize that the rungs are made of dicks you're obligated to suck and asses you're required to kiss. Receiving the fruits of his retarded excuse for labor in the form of bi-weekly checks progressively depreciating in PP, so that in 30 years a nice pile of conservatively mercifully taxed old fart cash that will certainly be gone in a decade or two to cover medical bills and deadbeat kids. And the years of effort and time and health and happiness expended to earn that cash. Yeah, a Zoomer with onset alcoholism made it in a week from his toilet and gloated on a virtual Agora, where some kid lost a bet and tattooed the subreddit's mascot on his ass, while some other kid won a bet and drank his own urine. Millennials sacked with debt, financially stuck without hope, played options with tips found on a random thread, risked measly sums of money after doing the minimum amount of DD required, and woke up to hundreds and thousands of Fed coin in the bank. Debt paid off thereafter. Unfortunate folks struck with medical bills, lack of equity, or just general financial tribulations. Used strats and spreads and held shares with tickers discovered on Wall Street bets and ameliorated financial burdens with the gains thereafter. Lives are being changed here, and the normies are starting to notice. 
Even so is Wall Street. At least they fucking better be. And the big dogs are watching. The alphabet boys. They don't like it when we the people do that we thing. Insider trading is so 2008. This is the roaring 20s now. Private equity firms need no longer to trade information with government officials and tech executives beating their quants senselessly when they question the ethics of their... All to make what, a couple hundred million fun coupons? Algos do the job for Wall Street anyways, and anything else is just data collection, market sentiment scraping, and stochastic volume movement logging. Paying monkey journalism to tap shit posts and hate scrawls to drop stock prices down so they could buy it in at a... Oh, yeah, we don't talk about it. You get my point. There is no smart money anymore. And Wall Street Bets is the holy grail of stupid cash and its travels. This is the new normal, dear viewer. The SEC is social distancing. The Fed is adhering to CDC mask guidelines. Wall Street is always solvent for some reason. The PPT is on call working doubles. New booty money is in perpetual flow. Retail trading has never been easier. Trading on Robinhood and its competitors is the best way for the plebeians to beat inflation. Everybody and their mom will soon be an equities trader and security analyzer. And the country is hyper-realizing into a manically depressive brave new world. And, you know, and that, that's just fine, man. That'll do. Scores of idiot savants minus the savant are rubbing their folds together on Wall Street bets, frying up their hard-earned tennies on the fires of the free market. As you scroll aimlessly, you may be thinking, this is just another oversaturated karma farming low effort meme gallery. But if I tell you that there's a diamond mine of value hiding behind these comedic nihilistic threads you might fumble over on a Sunday afternoon, and you're confused by that statement, but find my confidence alluringly persuasive, then I've got several contracts expiring today to sell you you absolute husk. What you see is a super brain of new and used traders hitting the market with the boldness of luxury suits and watches and the execution of clearance aisle jock straps and helmets, affecting marginal change in the actual markets. From the info gleaned and gained by the many nickel-plated shitposts and few well-researched analyses that bleed out from this hemorrhaging subreddit and into the wide world of money, its trade, and the other millions of aspiring autists that believe in its worth for better or worse. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow the link below to access my elite gamer platinum value trading course where I teach how you too can lose your life savings all without using a single one of those big gay economy words. And if you'd like to see more in the retard day traders series, then please drop a couple thou in that BTC address for me, fam. Please. I haven't seen daylight in months. This COVID shit got me kicked out of Miriam's house. Now all I can afford is cat food, man. Let a YouTuber live, man. 82,000 is all I need, bro. I'll suck your